Welcome to my video series, Mastering Serverless Application Observability. I'm Julian Wood, a Senior Developer Advocate for Serverless at AWS. If you haven't seen the introduction video, I suggest you start from there to understand what the series is about. I also go through the demo application I'm using to show how to add and use observability with your serverless applications. In this video, I'm going to be unpacking the concept of observability, which a lot of people are talking about in the industry at the moment and highlight a number of ways to think about it. The simple idea is to more effectively understand how our systems are behaving. So first up, we need to recognize that there's no such thing as an application that never fails, one that always keeps on running whatever happens. As Amazon CTO Werner Vogels often loves to say, everything fails all the time. We must assume we will need to deal with failures and often exactly when you don't want them to happen. Now, looking at a traditional application stack, there were a whole number of layers in the stack you had to monitor or do observability for yourself. From the network, storage, physical server hardware, all the way up through many abstraction layers of virtualization and operating systems, to your application itself and also business outcomes. I've spent 25 years as an infrastructure engineer and a lot of time setting up monitoring and alerting for many of these components across the many layers. But luckily, if you're building serverless applications, we now take much of the burden off your shoulders, so you don't have to monitor many of the layers yourself. This becomes AWS's responsibility. The layers are still there, but we look after the physical infrastructure, virtualization and operating system layers, and the platform runtime. You can now focus more time on your business logic as part of your application code and data. As applications have evolved and customer needs have expanded, monitoring needs to do a lot more than just watch the layers of a stack. Customer experience is ever more important. Resources are often short-term and ephemeral. If you're building distributed applications, you're likely using many more services. And so that means they're more connected parts of an application, which are connected to ever more devices spread maybe all over the globe. And the whole application is often evolving at a faster rate more deployments, often smaller in size, often to more locations. When code was running on a traditional server, all your code was together. With distributed applications, your code is now spread out and running across a number of different places. Observability is a term originally from control theory. Now, control theory itself is rather old, from the 19th century, and is about being able to control a dynamic system. Well, 60 years ago, uh, Rudolf Kalman, who was a Hungarian-American engineer and mathematician, then introduced the notions of controllability and observability. And this says observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred by knowledge of its external outputs. This means, can you tell what's going on in your entire system by only looking at its inputs and outputs? It's like sort of having a window into your application, but looking into the black box of your application to understand why something is happening. And then you take those outputs and you can use them to control the system. A simple example would be uh, more or less looking at load on your application and then automatically scaling something up or down. Monitoring is looking out for things that you know might go wrong. For example, the number of errors in a part of an application. That's something you can monitor for. Also, something like the latency when, say, talking to a database, uh, this is something that may go up or it may go down. However, you're likely building more complex applications today with a growing number of possible issues, and monitoring just isn't going to be enough. There is a set of problems which are anticipated. We know they might happen, but they're unexpected. For example, something like memory corruption. Something starts producing incorrect results. We know it's possible, but yeah, we don't expect it. With a complex multi-service, microservice environment, it gets even harder to work out what's going on. S3, for example, has more than 235 distributed microservices. There's just no way to foresee all the possible failure scenarios. So what we can do is gather enough telemetry so when those unexpected errors occur, we have a way to analyze the data and understand why it is happening. What's causing the problem and hopefully also creating a path to resolution. 
Getting good at observability means gathering enough of the right data so you don't have to add extra instrumentation to understand when you have an issue. Observability is also monitoring more than just failures. Is your application actually performing as expected? Even if all your monitoring dashboards are all lovely and green, are your customers getting the user experience you want to give them and that they expect? What's the usage of your application? How many people are signing up? What parts of your application are maybe hitting limits or congestion? Is the usage actually expected? What about business relevant information? What's the revenue being generated? From what geographic region are you seeing the biggest growth or a drop in signups? How would an outage of a particular component affect your business? Maybe what trends can you visualize? What tactical questions do you need to ask? Including business relevant information when building observability helps connect the health of a system component to the health of the business, which makes it much more useful. Observability is more about your organizational and culture and practices than it is just about your tooling. And a lot of observability is getting the culture right. How your business thinks about performance, failures, and collecting data. And humans are at the center of it. You need people to build the alerts, create the dashboards, choose the tools, and define the troubleshooting workflows. Tools are important, but the people and process is a big part of observability. Observability is not something you just plan in the design phase as well. It needs to be continually practiced and refined. The scope of observability is much more than just incident management. It's about creating a culture to make data-driven decisions. If I make a code change, is performance better or worse? I want to run a flash sale. Can my system scale to cope? I want to launch in a new geographic area. Well, what will the customer experience be for users there? All this observability telemetry can be used to answer these questions with data, making a core part of your software and DevOps lifecycle. Finding out what happened, even the unexpected things, how it happened, what specific actions resulted in the thing happening, when did it happen, how did we communicate when it happened? These are all things humans are great at piecing together from the observability data. So it's certainly worth your time doing some reading and finding resources applicable to your business and how you operate. So hopefully I've helped to unpack what observability is, how it has evolved from monitoring, and how to think about a culture of observability. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at gathering observability data. For plenty more information, we have a super aggregation site called serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and other learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you for watching. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.